Welcome to the second episode of Series 29, everyone. We're revving up to dive into the remaining 17 questions for L5R character creation. But before we get there, we have the usual announcements. First of all, thank you to everyone who voted in the Ennies this last week or so. We hope that shows like Asian Represent and multiple other great RPGs and RPG supplements that we featured on this show got your vote as well. Now we just have to sit back and wait for the results with bated breath. Secondly, we've been getting a lot more reviews on Podchaser lately, which is fantastic to see. Why Apple Podcasts can't make leaving reviews as simple as Podchaser does, I don't know. But if you have a few moments, you can easily leave a review there from your phone, from your computer, pretty much any browser, basically. Of course, Apple Podcasts helps the best because it is the biggest market. And every five-star review greatly helps us in the rankings and definitely helps others find the show. Whether you are in the U.S. or in any other country, your reviews really mean the world to us, and we'd really love to hear from you that way. If you've already left a review or don't want to go through that whole process, which is fine, think about introducing a friend to our show or to people seeking recommendations online and see if they'll give us a listen. If you're new to the show, welcome. We're really glad you could be here with us. Now, since it's just me here, we'll forego reading one of your reviews, uh, since we'd like to do that when it is both Amelia and myself here. So for now, let's just get back to the show, shall we? Enjoy. In the last episode of Character Creation Cast, David was creating a person from the Dragon Clan, part of the Tagashi Order, who learned from the Katsuki Investigator School. Amelia was creating a person who belonged to the Crab Clan, part of the Kuni family, who learned from the Kuni Purifier School. And I was creating a person from the Unicorn Clan, part of the Ide family, who learned from the Uchi Mishodu Master School. We're picking up right where we left off last time. Enjoy. So question four, how does your character stand out within their school? Um, And so what this one does is it gives you five little groupings of adjectives to kind of describe your character and how they did in their school while they were learning. Um, And then those associate with a ring, Mm -hmm. depending on what you pick. So you have creativity, passion, and drive. Uh, Increase your fire ring. Grace, eloquence, or empathy increase your air ring. Adaptability, friendliness, or awareness will increase your water ring. Thoroughness, patience, or calm will increase your earth ring. Self-awareness, insight, or mysticism will increase your void ring. Interesting. Okay. So this tells a little bit about your character as a student, as they were learning mm-hmm. this the school skill and things like that that they, they now know. Yeah. For me, of course, playing Tagashi Batman. Uh, the choice is obvious. It's my drive for justice. Mm. <laughs> so you just choose one of the three adjectives, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, really what you're doing is the mechanical part of it. So it doesn't necessarily have to be. It's just okay. like that category of of uh, descriptors. So I'm going to go with the creativity, passion, or drive. I'm going to increase my fire ring and say that my character was incredibly driven. It's interesting. Okay, I'm I am between creativity, uh, calm, and friendliness, uh, and that's three different rings. Um, if you go with friendliness, I mean your water ring, you can't increase anymore. Yep, but you can put it wherever. Exactly, yes. which is very interesting. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if I want that to be like a defining characteristic of the character. I want. I'm going to go with creativity. All right, that's All right. plus one five. Um. And where do I put that on the character sheet? Does it 
Does it matter? You just fill it into the ring. If you're you not if, like if you're not using the the writing prompt version of uh-huh. the character creation, then it's just sort of you put it down. After this, yeah, I don't think I put the writing prompt one in our folder, Ryan. I'm sorry. Oh, that's fine. So after this, it gets a lot more thoughtful, sort of building your character where they are in the world. Um, question five: Who is your liege? And what is your character's duty to them? This helps inform your geary, your sworn, your 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 character's sworn duty. Mm-hmm. Um, this is usually shaped by your role. Um, as such, I am going to choose that since my sworn role is courtier and a bushi. Um, since I want this to conflict with sort of who my character is, um, I'm going to say that my character is the sworn duty is they're an ambassador. They're there to be to go into the world and be the person who sort of maintains peace. Hmm. So that would be my Geary would be ambassador. And I would have the room to sort of fill that out into deeper maintenance of peace. Interesting. Uh, I'm going to go with something. I mean, since we're not playing a specific campaign, usually when I sit down to play a game, this is something that we do in session zero is kind of talk about like what we're going to be doing in the game. And then I try and figure out like where the Geary can fit in to that story so that I know that we're playing upon it and pulling on those strings. Um, but I'm going to go really broad this time and say that my Geary is to root out and destroy the taint. Interesting. So this one feels a bit more abstract to me. Mm-hmm. And yeah, this is a story prompt. Okay. This is also usually when you have a GM, the GM will be like, this is your role. How? What is the specifics? Yeah. Okay. So this is, um, this is a person who is my lord. This is a person that uh, my character is sworn to. Yep. And what's my role to them? Are are you an are you a are you the traveling wizard who delights their family? Are you a teacher? Are you an investigator? Are you somebody who has been tasked with exploring the world? Um, I'm going to go with um tasked with uh, my character is tasked with uh, mastering um a new instrument that was found. Excellent. Uh, that is uh, very, very reminiscent of a violin. Very cool. So would that would I put that then under my giri? Yes. This- so your giri is what your duty is. Now, keep in mind as you're picking this, this is something that your ninja is your personal goal, like the thing that you want to pursue mm. for yourself. So you want those two to be in kind some opposed? level of conflict. Okay, I so. I got it. I think so. It, the the ninja that one's going to be also kind of abstract. Make it up story prompt wise, right? Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And again, this the, the question six is: What does your character long for, and how might this impede their duty? So again, it's it's not just are you building your ninja in this question, your character's heart's desire, but how does that get in the way of doing your job? Mm-hmm. So for me. Very easy. My character must pursue justice. And unfortunately, <laughs> the person that I must pursue justice to take down, I can't. I'm an ambassador to their court. You can't kill the crime boss whose court you're in. That's just mm. rude. I have to do it another way. <laughs> Amazing. Mm. For me, I want my ninja to be um, a desire to learn more about the creatures of the Shadowlands. I think my character thinks that we have sort of stagnated on the level of knowledge that we have, and we've just decided as Cooney that we know all the things that we need to know, and that's that. Um, Whereas my character thinks that there's more to be gained there and more things that we need to understand. Um, But, you know, if if you're supposed to root them out and destroy them, that doesn't leave a whole lot of time for studying them. Okay, I'm going to change things up. Okay. Um, to make it more in line with uh, the the theme that I'm going for that I haven't stated yet. Um, 
I know what it is. I know you know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, we'll straighten it all on for people that uh, that haven't uh, heard me talk about this before. Um, so my, I'm going to change my Geary. Um, the just trying to get the names of the the Daimo. Daimyo. Daimyo. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that's like the family, the clan family Daimyo. So Daimyo is in society in Rokugani society anyone who can command fealty. Um, okay. That usually means that they have some form of landed holding. They might be a governor. They might be a head magistrate. They might be the, the they might be the head courtier. The, they might be the commander of an army. Um, basically, it is your your command is somebody who can command others to serve them. If those okay. others are samurai. So my sworn duty. Um, I'm changing it to be a little bit spicier. Uh, protect the daughter of the great family uh, Daimyo. And my desire, who I want to say um, to live peacefully with my one true love. That works. Is that the daughter? Um, mm-hmm. We don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so then the next question does get a little, it has a crunch aspect to it. It's not just a writing book. Question seven, what is your character's relationship with their clan? And this is sort of to reflect how does your character feel about what their clan traditionally values? And what this question asks is, do you agree with the values of your clan? In which case, you would get plus five glory as reputation. Or do you fundamentally disagree with the teachings of your clan? In which case... Choose a skill in which you have zero ranks in. You gain one rank in that skill. Why? Why is that skill a manifest of your disagreement? Hmm. Okay, so where would I know the Unicorn Clan's values? Is that back on the Unicorn Clan? That's back clan where page? it describes the Unicorn Clan. Oh, boy. Um, that's way back. Okay, yep. let me let me go back to that page. And, um, like, they talk about compassion is the most significant tenant of Bushido, mm-hmm. of the Unicorn Clan. It's page 48. Yeah. For, you. for me, I'm going to Normally say... Normally, I... Okay, go I was ahead. Say, no, I've, been, I've gone first previously. You should go. Normally, I almost always go with having a fundamental disagreement because I think it's interesting. But I think for this character, I'm not. I'm going to say that they believe in what their clan is doing. It is hard. And I'm going to take plus five glory. It, it, it is kind of hard to disagree with what the crab clan is doing. <laughs> right, right. I mean, as long as, like, in this timeline, they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, uh, on the opposite flip side, it's kind of hard to disagree also with what the dragon do, because the dragon are, do your thing as a clan. You do. You do you. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I want to do something that you tell me to do. Um, but I am going to say that, I'm going to say that my, my Tagashi Batman um, does disagree very much with certain ways that this witch's clan does, which is they are far too tolerant of crime. Ooh. Um, they, I mean, in this timeline, they're literally dealing with a growing heresy and a peasant revolt mm. in their own lands. Um, they, they, this is obviously like they need, they need to be less tolerant of these things. Mm-hmm. And, you're playing FBI Rokugan over there. <laughs> no, as I said, I'm Tagashi. I'm Tagashi Batman. That's interesting. Uh, the unicorn. It's it. From what I'm reading, it seems like they're kind of against the the traditional Rokugani politeness um, in society. Um, the unicorn spent a lot of time outside of Rokugan. Yeah. Um, and so they've only like sort of very recently come back and. Their culture and their values are very different from yeah, and it, it, the rest of society. It seems like they're all rough around the edges and and stuff like that. Yeah, and they like eat meat and stuff. Oh, they eat meat and sit in chairs. Heaven forbid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking. That, that or that is a that is a long standing joke from the L five R community of we're the unicorn clan. We eat meat and we sit in chairs. Yeah. <laughs> Because 
And then on some level, the Unicorn Clan get a really bad rep for not being traditional Rokugani value. And to that end, they sort of wind up being the the token the 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 token ethnic minority in Rokugan. Mm-hmm. Um, and that again, that's problematic that you have your token ethnic. But on some level, like that's sort of what the rest of the clans treat them as, even though in many ways Rokugan has sort of stayed stagnant for centuries and is very mm-hmm. deeply conservative. And then along you come the Unicorn Clan, who go like, "Hey, human life has value, people," and apparently that's a controversial statement. And <laughs> <sighs> oh man, I have I have so many things I could say about that. Yeah, because there's there's a lot that I agree with for this character, uh, but there's some that I disagree with. Um, so I think this is like overall, just like, do you have a total fundamental disagreement or? I don't know if I have like a fundamental general understanding of exact. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say that by the ta- I'm taking a rank of tactics because very much the hands off approach does not agree with Togashi Batman. So there needs to be more focus on how to properly conduct war. Hmm. And Ryan, that's maybe the other way to look at this for you if you're not sure about. Yeah whether you have a disagreement or not, is to look at those skills and say, like, is there something that would represent me doing things my own way? Yeah. I want to say that um, this character is more refined um, and is more more willing to, uh, I guess, integrate with the Rokugani uh, society and politeness and whatnot. Um, and probably uh, goes against their clan in terms of um trying to trying to escape like the the pressures of the clan uh Mm -hmm. by doing performance um and then we'll pull we'll pull that music into this character uh with uh with a one rank performance all right question eight what does your character think of bushido the code of honor that was given to Rokugan, literally by heaven, as in a bunch of demigods fell from heaven, said, hi, we're having a society now. It has samurai and Bushido. Don't you want to be part of it? Some people <laughs> said no. They got kicked out of their country. It's been a thousand years since then, though. So the country that has been built since has been built around the pre- precepts of the Code of Bushido. Mm-hmm. Every samurai is heavily, heavily, heavily indoctrinated with the belief of Bushido. And as such, you either are generally somebody who believes very devoutly in it or somebody who really doesn't think it works. Hmm. Doesn't seem like there's a middle ground there. No, there really isn't. (laughs) So I always answer this question the same way, in which case I say, I do not agree with Bushido um, because Bushido is garbage. Um, Yeah, I mean, like... I get it, but also there there's times that things need to bend. Would that mean I disagree? Generally, yeah. Okay. Then you're just congratulations, you're a normal person. <laughs> yeah. uh, if your character diverges from some or all the common beliefs about how samurai should behave honorably, gain one rank in one of the following skills to represent past behavior unbefitting of samurai or deeply um, defied the norm. Commerce, labor, medicine, seafaring, skullduggery, survival. Hmm. I picked skullduggery um, because I think this character is like, look, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. I am also taking a rank of skullduggery because Tagashi Batman gets stuff done. (laughs) (laughs) I am between... uh, a rank of medicine um, or another rank of survival, which would put me at three. Survival is riding horses. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, the skills in this game are very broad. You'll <laughs> notice that under each category, there aren't very many skills yeah. um, compared to something like a Palladium game. <laughs> oh, uh, <what>? God. 
<laughs> which is Ryan's favorite game system. Yeah. Um, there's nothing quite like a Palladium yeah, game there's... letting you roll everything. Everything. Mm-hmm. Just let the RNG, just let RNG take the wheel. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go with uh, survival then. Cause I like riding horses. Good. All right. <laughs> now we get into once again, the, one of the more riding prompt ish sections for the next four questions. Um, Nine, what is your character's greatest accomplishment so far? What this is, is this is to help you build your distinction. Uh, Distinctions are basically part of the advantage system. They're something cool that your character does, something that they are notable for, something they are known for. And there's a wide selection of what they are in the book. Uh, They're almost all keyed to a ring of some type. And this is there to sort of the way they work is they give you sort of a flavor effect, like you might have a sixth sense, where you can just sense like something supernatural is going on, ghosts like talking to you, that sort of thing. And if you are ever making a roll where it can apply, you can call upon your advantage to roll re-roll two dice after you've rolled them, but before you started selecting which ones you hmm. That is one thing I like about the advantages and disadvantages in this game, is they're easy to keep track of because they all do the same thing mechanically. It's just a matter of when they do that thing. I I agree that they're they're a lot easier than they were in the previous game, but I also kind of really don't like them <laughs> <laughs> compared to the previous versions because they're just very bland and um, yeah. there's too many of them. They're actually, I'm very, I, I'm very strong of the opinion that I think the advantage disadvantage system um, of this version was rushed and wasn't given enough time to really develop. And the fact oh, that character creation involves literally getting four is a little daunting. Hmm. Yeah. And I know that like, I've spent a lot of time flipping through and being like, none of these are really what I'm looking for. Um, and there've been a few times where I will make up my own. Yes just because I kind of know what I want, but... I, I think making um, up your own is the best. Like, the, I very much think that the advantages and disadvantages that they have in the book really should be just sort of, just sort of uh, guidelines. Mm-hmm. And there's also sort of the problem of, like, that why is there a ring associated to it? Is that just only on that approach? Yeah, I... It, unclear, right? Because it's like, well, I rolled with fire, but do I, so does it still count? Do I still get to re-roll if I want to? Or <laughs> Yeah, no? exactly. I think it kind of depends on your GM and how so, feisty they are. All that being said, <laughs> I'm taking Subtle Observer because uh, the knight has eyes. Oh. <laughs> now, Subtle Observer is tied to the air ring. It allows me to... As long as I can, I can understand cues that people give off while speaking, and I can read people's lips and facial expressions to understand what they are saying, even if I cannot hear them. The other thing it can do is whenever I perform a check, to, I need to spot or use small details of other people's nearby, such as a courtesy error, check to reveal an unpleasant truth pleasantly, or a sentiment error to detect someone else's weaknesses, I may re-roll up to two dice. Okay. I am... 100% making up this character as I go. I do not have a concept here. So I'm going to go with seasoned. This person has been around doing this a while, knows what they're doing. It's the scariest kind of good chunter. <laughs> I have no idea. Let's see. Uh, the kind of good um, witch hunter who has a few skeletons in their closet and not all those skeletons are human. So this Ryan, feels... I think you want karmic tie. Where, where's what page is that on? Page 108. 108. Just knowing where you're headed here. Ah, okay. Let's see. I'm gonna apply it to the character with karmic tie disc. And you have a supernatural tie with another character of your choosing, as if you had a sixth sense and you can tell when the character to whom you are karmically tied is in danger or has died. Ooh. This is spicy. I like it. Um, you always know the gender distinction they are located in, or direction they are located in, even if they are separated from you by thousands of li. Yep. Uh, I'm guessing that's like miles or something. Uh, it's a it's a dis- it's a measure of. Let me look <laughs> up. There's a Google out there that can tell me how long a li is. Uh huh. 
Um, let's see. When performing a check to act on behalf of the one with whom you share a bond. Um, okay. You may re-roll up to two dice. Oh, cool. Okay. I like it. I like it. Karmic time. I mean, you can certainly keep looking around. Yeah, I'm going to keep... I think that that might be what you're looking for. Yeah, that's a very good one. I like it. Um... So a Lee is um, the referred to as the Chinese mile, and it is roughly a third of a mile. A little less okay. than a third of a mile. But maps mean nothing in this game. Oh, God, we're having that argument. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, that's not my hill to die on. That's Jude's hill to yeah. die on. He can. So... I will say this about the new version. The maps may mean nothing, but they're so pretty. <laughs> They're beautiful. I need to get my one from the beginner box frame. I, yeah. Oh boy. Welcome to Rokugan, where the art is gorgeous and giant, the maps don't matter. My giant print of Shahai that I have above my bed. And girl, not that I'm uh, shaming. Yeah. Our, I, 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 I may have a, I, I may have a price tag on a certain piece of artwork by Drew Baker that if I ever own a house, I have to buy. Ooh. But I have asked how much, and I've got a figure. And if that is still for sale, if I ever get a house, I'm buying it. And it's an oil painting, and it is beautiful. And it might. Con- Ugh, his art is so gorgeous. Like so, and he's just the nicest. He is. He is the nicest, one of the nicest human beings I've ever met. Drew Baker, if you're listening to this, you are awesome and nice, and we love you. <laughs> also, and your art is so good. Also, thank you for listening. Also, yeah. yeah. So, question 10. <laughs> what holds your character back the most in life? Now, this is an adversity. Similar oh. to a distinction, this is a anti-advantage. Um, it gives you sort of a flavorful downside, but and if it ever comes up, the GM can make you re-roll two dice that show a success or an explosive success. If this causes you to fail, you gain a void. Aha. Uh-huh. And uh, yeah, again, they're like usually things like you're being blackmailed or you've been cursed by a god or Mm -hmm. the other downside is you can pick these up in game because like getting hurt in combat can leave you with these, which kind of sucks. So, so where do we put our advantages? It should be on either the second page, I think under advantages, there should be a column for distinctions and a section for passions. Okay, so I see distinctions and passions. Yep, so that's your f- your first one. So we're doing distinctions and adversities right now. It's They call them advantages and disadvantages, but there are two kinds of advantages. There's distinctions and passions, and then there are two kinds of disadvantages, adversities and anxieties. All right, all right, here it comes. So I think that's where you're getting confused. Here it comes. <laughs> that took a while though we're like two hours into recording before you got too annoyed this is with me. this is the first thing i've been kind of annoyed at like why isn't it just advantage i get it it's flavor whatever i i <laughs> i really dislike this part of the game like this part of the system i think it is one of them and usually like picking these is where i feel like a character starts to come to life and starts to have a personality but i don't like the ones that are in this book you can create your own with your GM uh, on page 137. Yeah. Um, this is why... And it is e- it is easy because they all have the same mechanical thing. So it is very easy to come up with one mm-hmm. and make it balanced or whatever. But This is kind of why I like the beginner set because you get one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like go. you get one. You don't have four. You get one. So I got to so go to... Tagashi Batman is choosing Scorn of Criminals. Oh, all right. Which is, uh, I have earned the ire of a particular group, which has seriously damaged my ability to work with its members or enlist their help. So, uh, criminals hate me. <laughs> criminals hate him. Now, I number did, six will shock you. Now, mechanically, <laughs> that is tied to the water ring, and this is important because I only have a water ring of one, which makes it a lot easier for this to trigger a fail state in the rules, mm. which is actually the power gamer goes, well, I want you to make me re-roll those because that way it's more likely to cause me to fail, which just means it's more likely to get me those delicious, delicious void points. Mm-hmm. So I generally recommend choose a ring or choose a disadvantage that is based upon your lowest ring. 
And oh, again, this is a flavorful thing that's supposed to show like a, a genuine weakness of your character, something that literally holds them back, and perhaps is the reason why they only have a one in that ring. Okay. Specific disadvantages. Okay. I kind of want to take some Shadowlands taint, but I don't know if I can do Void Strike then. Or um, Jade Strike. Uh, I don't Void think strike. Jade Strike. I think you can Jade Strike even if you're tainted. Let's see. You always could in the past. That's a change of the rules that'll be funny. And it's like, no, Earthcom, we don't like you anymore. They won't go punching things for you. Because I want the, cause they're tied to the rings in this one, too, so I want it to be my air. That is one of the things I do like about this, is that you have both the afflicted status, which ties to a ring, and the Shadowlands taint, which ties to a ring. So literally, as your character, basically, the, the, the source of the corruption manifests in a particular way, tied to an aspect of your personality. And there's nothing in Jade Strike saying you can't use it, even if you're tainted. Sweet. I'm going to take Shadowlands Taint Air. Um, you have trouble sympathizing with other humans, but you can understand the emotions of corrupted beings easily. Bizarrely, Jade Strike doesn't affect... Oh, wow, that is so weird. It only hits otherworldly beings, not necessarily tainted ones. Oh, interesting. Yeah. It only lets you blow up demons, not like, you know, zombies. Unless zombies have the otherworldly trait. So it's less about people That's who are, new. like... Who have gotten sick and more about killing actual demons. Hmm. Mm. Lame. <laughs> yeah, you really can't use test test random people to see whether or not they have uh, stayed too long in the Shadowlands anymore. They really learned that lesson, didn't they? <laughs> Boy. One of the other uh-huh. things I kind of dislike about this, and a bit, little bit of a soapbox here. <sighs> why, oh why, this is 2020. Why oh why is our um, disadvantage section phrased in a way that it is ableist? I.e. Uh-huh. Yeah. I, I noticed that. Deafness. Yeah. Muteness, yep. Muteness. Uh, mute. Missing limbs. Mm-hmm. Um, these are all mis- and these are all presented as disadvantages. And the truth is because these are disadvantages you can pick up through damage. Mm-hmm. And I, I very much dislike this aspect of it. And I, again, I was like, mm-hmm. again, this is this is a problematic element of the game. That it's 2020. <laughs> why do we still have these things in our games? Not to say that we shouldn't mm-hmm. have characters who are blind. I think it's very important to have these things in the game. But why are we punishing people mechanically for this? Yeah. And why are we? requiring people to basically take these disadvantages to represent this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and it's a hallmark of a lot of games, but you're right, like, this is a new game. It has not been out that long. Yeah. That, like, we... This game came out in 2018. There is no excuse. We should have learned some lessons by now. So that being okay. said, it's totally cool to be cursed by a god, though. I mean, For sure, sure, yeah. All right. I'm going to go with Lost Memories. That's a fun one. Uh, that's Adversities, right? Yep. That is the only one I could find in there that even remotely was along the theme that I'm going for. Okay. Now, number 11. Oh, wait. We're still waiting on uh, Amelia's form of uh, Shadowlands Taint. What? Oh, it's Air. <laughs> oh. I think Air. Good old Air Taint. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I can't sympathize with other humans. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, you're talking about your flawed character. Yep. Sorry. <laughs> that was a little mean. Harsh. 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 Little true, but also harsh. Look, I'm doing that okay. <laughs> We love you anyway. Thanks. So eleven. What activity makes your character feel at peace? And what this is, is this is actually probably the easiest. It's a passion. It is something your character does, and when they get to do it, they get to lose three strife, basically. And it's just a way of just lowering strife. Um, Really, the trick is, choose something your character does to just calm down. Interesting. Or something they can, uh, yeah, like, maybe it's a daredevil. When you choose something that's really stupid and risky, you lose a bunch of strife. Or maybe it's fashion. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's gossiping. 
Maybe it's Ikebana, the manly art of minimalist flower arranging. <laughs> um, maybe, and it's, again, it's one of those things of this also has sort of rings tied to it, which, while mechanically they don't really do much, um, it winds up being sort of a suggested way, a suggested approach to a particular skill. Um, as such, I am going to choose T. All right, I'm going for brushwork. I like to. I paint. picked fortune telling because that sounded fun. Very cool. And twelve. What concern, fear, or foible troubles your character the most? This is how we create anxieties. Anxieties are like the opposite of passions. Um, anxieties basically are something that um, when you encounter it, it gives you strife. So mm. maybe fear of death. Maybe it's dark secret, like my dark secret, that I am actually a masked vigilante who goes out into the night <laughs> and delivers <laughs> justice outside of the law as Togashi Batman. The dark secret is the mask is your your normal <laughs> self. Yes. And basically when I must, when I am confronted with my dark secret, I, I get strife. Or when I have to hide it, I get strife. There was a uh, comic panel I happened upon uh, recently where Wonder Woman was using the lasso of truth on Superman and Batman and asked them what their name was. Uh, Superman said Clark Kent. Batman said Batman. Yep. Because <laughs> <laughs> that is his true self. Now I have a question. Is your character's uh, anxiety painful honesty you just get strife when you have to lie no i don't think so i think my character is fine with lying um there was one in here jealousy i believe ah that's a good one yeah that goes very well uh with the theme that i'm going for and yes again by the end of it like you, you this these questions do very much allow the character to sort of form and see like really create these breathing full characters i'm also gonna go with dark secret um that dark secret being that i have some shadowlands taint yeah yeah that's not uh, yeah that's a twofer right there and so won't get me into trouble at yep. all <laughs> <laughs> taint no thing oh, yeah, i already made that joke you did Ooh. so the last of these section what who has your character learned the most from during their life and this is basically your opportunity to have some an NPC that means a lot to your character. This is your mentor figure. This might be your teacher. Maybe it was the older student at your school. Maybe it was the wise old monk who would come to your village. Um, for me, it's going to be my family's retainer because my parents are dead and I was raised by their butler Makes like sense. you do. Um, um, can I pick my karmic tie? As this most yeah. important person. Now, yeah. what this relationship does is it either gives you an advantage, so either a distinction or a passion related to that, or a disadvantage, so either an anxiety or a dis or a uh, or an adversity, but also one rank in a skill that that you get a an additional rank of. Oh, okay. So. So I'm going to say that I'm not sure if they have it here. No, it's in one of the one of the other books. They don't have it here. But I am going to say I'll take the advantage servant, and I have I have Alfred. Nice. His name's not actually Alfred, but all right. So this is who they okay. So does it have to be a skill that you have zero in, or is it just one rank one? I think it just. One rank and a skill. It, cool. Yeah, I think it's any rank and a skill. I don't think it's a skill you have zero ranks in. You can literally get, like, you can go to rank three ranks, and this is one of the ways you can get to rank three of a skill. Yes. Yeah. So, um, I'm going to show my hand here a bit and say that uh, this character is named Haruka, um, and she is uh, my character's one true love. And, um, she's also a, um, Utaku battle maiden. So you have, was this an ally? 
which is this one is of an ally. Nice. Yep. Um, yeah. So I get to choose if this gave me an advantage or a disadvantage in an extra skill, right? Yes. Okay. So disadvantages are on page where um one eleven one fifteen. Yeah, they start at one fifteen. Okay, one sixteen. There we go. And this could be from either of them, right? The anxiety or yes, either anxiety or adversity or okay, yeah, or yeah, if you're picking. And up. my servant's name is Hochu because Hochu uh, Atsuka Hochu um, is the voice actor for um, Alfred in uh. the terror in the <laughs> Batman Ninja film. That oh, came out no. in 2018. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> but it's a good source to get Japanese names. I mean, that's true. There's- so I picked Whispers of Failure. Ooh. I think I had a teacher who was incredibly hard on me and um, just did not think that I could do it, partly because I was not doing what I was supposed to be doing. Um, well, you did have to get tainted somehow. It, right, right. Um, I am going to find a name for this person, because I thought this through. I pulled out the good old um, third edition book, oh. which just has a whole page and a half of names. Ah, that's why you needed the third edition book. Path of yeah. Waves also has common Rokugani names. Hmm. Oh, really? And common non Rokugani names. So. I don't know where that book is right now. Oh, it's over there and I can't reach it. <laughs> Let's see. It's also why I'm now Togashi Koichi. Because uh, Koichi Yamadera is the voice actor for Batman in Batman Ninja. Hmm. Okay. And I have to go with uh, Phobia. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll go with that one. Uh, I'm going to go with Phobia. Um, a fear of, um, what was it again? Uh, wasn't it some kind of fish it was the, or something? It was like the water cucumber or something. What was it? Sea, sea cucumber. cucumber. Yep. Sea cucumbers. Fear, fear of sea cucumbers. Are you impressed that I remember that? I'm very impressed. <laughs> fear of sea cucumbers? <laughs> yes. If that ever comes up, I would be impressed. I know. I mean, it, it has to come up now that it's in there, right? Uh... If your GM was uh, was observant. Fair, fair. All right. And then choose a skill since you chose a disadvantage. All right. Um, so I am between another rank in melee to put me up to two. Not bad. Um, a lot of spells use theology, though. Oh, interesting. So theology is good if you want to be a caster yes. of sorts. Hmm. I don't think I want to be like great at casting spells. I want to be great at no. You know what? I think I do want to be better at casting spells than combat. Maybe Ugh, that's hard to say. <laughs> Ryan, yeah, we don't have to play. Yeah, this here. I know. Play it's it. fine. There are no consequences so to these. Follow I'm your with, heart. We're gonna go with what makes more sense. Um, Haruka is a uh, Utaku battle maiden and probably gave me many pointers on wielding a weapon. Nice. <sighs> Question 14. We're in the home stretch. <laughs> We're almost there. there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what do people notice first upon encountering your character? So this is sort of like what are, something that's unique to your character. What is the first impression? And again, this is another one of those writing prompts. Uh, mechanically, there's nothing particular to it. Uh, but it is sort of your personality, your habits, and your quirks. Also, choose one aesthetic accoutrement that your character carries or wears most of the time. This is a personal flair that might accent their striking features or stand in contrast to them. I mean, the obvious is that I have to have a mask. <laughs> but you're not a scorpion. But I'm not a scorpion. <laughs> <laughs> Scandals everywhere. Is it the, the mask of a bat? No. <laughs> no, but only because bats have different connotations in certain Okay. Features. Uh, uh, it is a laughing Oni. It's also trademarked, so you don't want to get in legal trouble. <laughs> uh, but the laughing demon mask is 
is one of my go-tos for like characters who are who who are secretly not very well adjusted people who can barely who who have troubles at acting, you know acting like a well adjusted person who doesn't want to kill people. I generally mm-hmm. give them the laughing demon mask because it works. There you go. So I do say my favorite scorpion mask to this day in L5R remains Shishiro Yadoka. <laughs> in fact, you know what? No, I'm not going with the demon mask. I'm going with Shishiro Yadoka's mask because it's ridiculous. Nice. Shishiro Yadoka doesn't need a mustache. Shishiro Mo- Yadoka's ma- ma- uh, mask has a mustache. <laughs> Incredible. That is amazing. All right. Um, I'm going to say my, my teal hair. Ooh. I'm going to keep it simple and say that I have, like, meticulous, perfect face paint. All the better to cover up the secret side of the, of the team spreading. Mm-hmm. Right? And I've got a... I have to think of a personal item that goes along with I've this. I've got a cerulean-colored bow um, that uh, is part of my accoutrement. It's like a dark blue. All right. Yeah, I'm going to say that I also have a small notebook that I will not let anyone look at. But you always carry. Right. It only has... I'm constantly writing in it, but like will not let anybody read over me. <laughs> it's literally just a bunch of stick figures. <laughs> <laughs> my plans, stick figures. All right. Question 15. How does your character react to stressful situations? Um, basically, this is your si- your default unmasking that they sort of give, like, this is to sort of get you in the mindset of thinking how your character would unmask, what is their, what is their, what is their go-to emotional response when they must be emotional? And, uh, I mean, part of me wants to go, like, terrifying people. That makes sense. Just suddenly have a very deep voice. <laughs> suddenly have a very deep <laughs> Swear to me! <laughs> <laughs> Demand people swear to me. Uh, <laughs> slash question. Demand people swear to me. Slash challenge their lies. I'm going to say that they just stop talking. If you're not going to say anything worthwhile, I'm not going to talk to you. Um, I'm going to say my character. Um, trying to figure out how to say it. Like, um, they get cold and like speak with intent i guess like they get like distant like and little little icy and like clipped yeah clipped and yeah curt. like to the point yeah curt kind of um maybe matter of fact type of stuff mm-hmm. like gets right to the point all right what are your character's pre-existing relationships this is question 16 what is your character's pre-existing relationships with other clans Families, organizations, and traditions. This is a lot. Yeah. (laughs) So this question would be a lot better served if we were sitting down and doing this as part of a session zero, because this is where we would start to create like those group NPCs and things like that. Um, It's a little hard in doing something like this where it's just character creation. Yeah. Um, I would say for me, uh, the mechanical thing on this, after you've sort of finished is, Choose one item rarity seven or lower that your character received as a gift for one such group, took in battle fighting against them, or otherwise relates or to or symbolizes the character's past slash ongoing relationship with them. Add this item to your starting outfit. Oh, very interesting. So I'm straight up taking poison. Smile of noxious poison. So item can be a weapon? It can be. Now, the interesting thing about this is, since it adds it to your character's starting, um, it's generally assumed in any downtime action, you can basically get your starting equipment, Mm -hmm. as long as you have access to your clan, family, resources, that sort of thing. So, um, unless they are specifically destroyed and they're like a unique, irreplaceable item, like a katana or a wakazashi or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to figure out... Like, do I want another weapon? Do I want to? Do I want to finally get my uh, my sweet sweet trident? Uh, trident, or do I want some armor? Was your trident given to you by 
a family member. Because again, this is like a gift. This is something that somebody has, did you take it in battle? Um, mm -hmm. Very much for this, the, the poison, his um, Tagashi Koichi's poison collection has very much been taken from the various um, shinobi that he has personally killed as a, you know, or from various sort of firemen gangs and drug dealers and things like that, that he has personally hunted and killed in the night. Mm -hmm. As while Batman may not kill people, Togashi Koichi does. <laughs> I'm going to say that at one point, I assisted a group of Yasuki merchants um, with some Oni problems. Um, and as a gift was given a divination kit. All right. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to go with, uh, the reason why I'm tasked with protecting the daughter of the great family daimyo is because I stepped up and saved her life once. Um, and as a gift, I was given, um, this trident, um, in order to better protect her. All right. Part six, ancestry and family. We're almost Question there. Question 17. <laughs> How would your character's parents describe them? So, again, this is sort of like, what would your character's parents say about them? What would they think about what they are? How they do things? Um, it's important to sort of think about it in terms of your family. Um, and again, this is just more relationship fodder. Um, mechanically, Gain one rank of one skill in which your character has zero ranks and determine whether your character's parents approve of this extracurricular interest or see it as a regrettable deviation and why. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. More skills. Yeah. Um, for Togashi Koichi, I am taking martial arts unarmed one rank, which my parents would approve of because, well, they're dead, but... You know, I'm supposed to be a good Tagashi. Now I'm still a member of the Tagashi Order. Eh, I don't know. Uh, it's complicated. Um, so my parents were probably, you know what? Since anyone can be a Tagashi, I'm I'm an ex-Scorpion. <gasps> oh, All right. Nice. My character was born a Scorpion. Tagashi Koichi was born a Scorpion. He has his father's mask. And it happens that they were both murdered. I was raised by basically the peasant servant and and basically was called to the Togashi Mountain. Oh, wow. Made that because that's what you do when you are like a reincarnated Togashi. I like that. And though I have assumed the identity, though I have become a Togashi, I was not suitable to be, I did not have the proper focus to be able to train properly as to train properly as a monk. So I was sent down to the Kitsuki because I was in, I wanted to pursue justice. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Batman. Um, so I would think that my parents would probably disapprove of my pursuit of justice, including mastering the ways, but, but the, but very much my greater family would think that the dragon clan would. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So you just pick a skill. You don't have ranks mm -hmm. in. And you choose whether your parents are happy with it or not. Basically, yeah. Okay. I'm going to say I took a rank in culture. I'm going to say that my parents tried really hard to make me a decent, personable human. Uh, it didn't go well. <laughs> I'm just not a people person. But they tried. All right. I'm going to pick um, theology, I think. Um and I'm going to say that my parents were um, fairly uh, fairly devout to their religion, um, so that kind of uh, rubbed off on on my character a bit, right. and they would probably approve. Nice. Question eighteen: Who was your character named to honor? So this is basically the name that your character has in society, which usually is there to honor an ancestor, a role, somebody of importance to the family, that sort of thing. Sometimes you have a choice of this, sometimes you don't. Mechanically, what this translates to is 
break out your D hundred. It's or break out your ten sided die. It's time to roll on the heritage table. I love oh the yeah, heritage table. I want a heritage. So the heritage table is a long standing tradition that has existed inside Legend of the Five Rings RPG from the first edition, where. Basically, you have a table of random results to determine what your character sort of inherits from their family. Uh, traditionally, in the first edition, when it was first put in there, you had to roll on it. You had no choice. And it was ro- it was known that not all heritage tables are built equally. And uh, the, the joke was that if you were a Phoenix Clan character, you could accidentally wind up rank two at character creation or dead. <laughs> so, and like half the things on the crab list got you randomly Shadowlands tainted. Um, not everyone, again, it was like not everyone's chart was built equally. Um, for this version of it, they have a centralized one, which not all results are equal, but most of them are a little bland. I'm not going to lie, it's not as it fun. It really isn't. <laughs> I loved the heritage tables and then like the supplement books oh, obviously yeah. had different ones in them so you could get like really weird stuff. I ended up getting Ishiken for yep. free um when I started my first Phoenix character. So that saved me like 12 points of character creation. <laughs> um that's also the one they could start you with Momoku, which literally is you can't spend void. Yeah. As a note, it's the same role to like get to the sub table that could give you either of those. So, um, so I have the chart in front of me. Okay. So we roll twice and we choose one, right? Is that right? Then basically it involves usually roll one and that determines, and then there's usually a secondary roll. Okay. But you basically roll it all the way through and then you roll again, depending on generally what your. Yikes. Okay. So I got, uh, four or seven. So four is Dynasty Builder. One of my ancestors was instrumental in the rise of a powerful lord. Um, or uh, seven was Elevated Service. Uh, one of your ancestors was uh, possibly a commoner who was elevated to a samurai by marriage or mandate of a daimyo. I think I'm going to go with Dynasty Builder. That actually works pretty well, I believe, with the theme. And then I have to roll a d10. Mm-hmm. And that will tell me what skill um, I gain. I gain a social skill. But it also gives you a social benefit and a social problem of decrease your glory by three and increase your honor by three. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Oh, no, that's that's for the seven. Oh. So for four. Four is decrease your glory by three. It's just bad stuff. That's not bad. So I got either Dynasty Builder or Stolen Knowledge. Oh, I know what you're picking. I want... I want stolen knowledge, so I decrease my honor by five. <laughs> um, and then you roll to see what kind of technique you, you get. get. And y'all. I nice. <laughs> What'd you get? So I get to learn some Maho. Oh. Yes. <laughs> I'm very excited. You got Maho. I got it Maho. Was meant to <laughs> be happy for me. <laughs> um, I get to choose from wondrous work. Uh, which is one of your ancestors created a piece of great beauty and that one renown for your family or glorious sacrifice. Your ancestors perished nobly in battle and one of their signature items vanished with them or was lost in the subsequent years. And we all know what Batman lost. He <sighs> lost his family. He lost his parents. Uh huh. So I'm taking glorious sacrifice. And all right. I roll an eight. So I get another item. Ooh. Oh, I wanted a boat. That's what happens when you roll a 10. You can get <laughs> a, a boat. boat is an item. Sometimes it's a boat. Um, and basically the way that works is um, it's somewhere in the world. I would work with the GM. They would choose one quality. And um, I choose one quality and the GM chooses one quality. I do not know where the heirloom is, but could later reclaim it during the campaign. So I nice. won't go through that. But I still love doing things like broken when it's like, you have an estate, it has the broken quality. <laughs> or the damaged quality. Uh-huh. Or the holy quality. Oh, it's a really nice place, yeah. Yeah. Mundane. Your home is just really kind of boring. <laughs> so I rolled um, 
a seven, which is games under dynasty builder. So I gain plus one in games. Um, and I'm thinking that comes from, uh, my time playing chess. Nice. Uh, which is nice. And then the dynasty builder goes very well where, uh, if people haven't caught on yet, I am making uh sailor Neptune, um, <laughs> from the sailor moon, uh, anime series. Um, and, uh, the lore of that is that these characters are reincarnated, uh, from previous iterations of themselves from the silver millennium kingdom. Um, and they were responsible for protecting and raising that kingdom to kind of a, a glorious, peaceful time, uh, which eventually fell. I, one of the saddest things about Legend of the Five Rings as our RPG right now is that there are no Sailor Scout alt universe rule sets for this game. There is no magical girl alt rule set for this game. There is no like high school anime alt rules for this game. Yeah, but Path of Waves now gave the option of like how to make your own yes. schools for this Ooh. game. So I, I I am I am waiting for the day that they actually finally if they hopefully fingers crossed they actually do um L5R RPG Forge, like they did for Genesis Forge. And they just give you a platform where you could just come up with some amazing stuff and post it. Yeah, absolutely. And share it with the community. I think we need more Magical really Girl nice. content. <laughs> and if we don't, I'm just going to force it in there anyway. No reason not to. Exactly. Hot blooded anime action. That is the name yeah. of this game. All right, 19. Almost there. What is your character's personal name? After you've chosen the name of your ancestor, your character's names, honors. Choose your personal name derived from it that your character will be known by. It might be the same name or an alteration with significance to the character. Hmm. This is name your character. This is basically name your character. I'm just going to shorten mm -hmm. Koichi to Ko. Um, I'm just going to go with Michiru. Nick? I picked Tomoe because I could. Yeah. Oh, no. So... <laughs> and finally, how, question 20. How should your character die? How oh, should your character die? Now, if I remember 4th edition, it was a little more certain, right? How will. How yeah, will it was how your will your die? character yes. die. Yes. Um, that's a very interesting change. I agree. Yeah. And one I don't necessarily agree with. Yeah. Yeah, I liked I liked the finality and the... Like, you knew your character's endpoint. Yeah, you you. It's basically right. like opening up the last uh, chapter of a of a thick novel and reading that chapter before you read the rest of the book. And again, even if even if that's not how your character actually winds up dying, because I'm quite frankly certain that my friend who died in one of my campaigns never expected to die on a boat hit by a fist of a sauna well in the middle of the ocean, <laughs> but. Who could have called that was not on my bingo card? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that hap like the, the concept of living life facing death is very much part of this game and is part of sort of the emotional heart of this. And it mm -hmm. gives the urgency to strife, gives the urgency to the conflict of your earthly, de of your worldly desire versus your mm -hmm. sworn duty. There, you don't. You're you're on a ticking clock. The world is changing. Time is moving forward. Nothing is permanent. Embrace the moment. Mm -hmm. I think it does a lot to set the tone of the game. That like this is not a fun romp. Oh, it is a fun romp. <laughs> this but... is. I mean, in between, uh -huh. there are fun yeah. romps. Um, but yeah, that like that there is a very serious overtone. Yeah. to the game. Memento Mori. Remember, you will die. Mm -hmm. That being said, Tagashi Ko would probably meet his end likely... Oof, I mean, part of me wants to say his hands wrapped around the murderer of his... Uh, the, the throat of the murderer of his parents. But unfortunately, he, has, he, he is too tragic of a figure to die in such a glorious way. Ooh. He would very likely die an old man alone in a castle filled with memories and regrets. Oh, nice. I like it. And the world ultimately not remembering what he did. Oof. 
unless unless he trained a protege uh, <laughs> to take on his mantle. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course. But then they wouldn't rec- re- remember what he did. They would remember what the mantle did. Yes. Hopefully. But hopefully he will be free of hopefully he will be free of the pain that I that I must grapple. Uh-huh. Um so f- for Machiru, um I'm going to say how should Machiru die? Um sacrificing herself to save the ones she loves. Uh, for Tomoe, I am going to say they are going to die at the hands of a Shadowlands creature that is, in the end, not so unlike themselves. Whoa. We did it! <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Okay. Yay so where, where do we spend experience and... <laughs> <laughs> no. That's it. Okay. We're no, done. Wow. That's 20 questions. To create a single character, yeah, um, that's that's a wild ride. But I feel like we know a lot about them. Yeah, I, I think so too. Um, and I, I really liked the uh, the the path that our characters took, and I'm I'm so happy that you got Maho. <laughs> Me too. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm very happy for you that you're dabbling with blood magic. Well, it explains so Thank much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's amazing. Well, this is a fun group of characters. Yeah, it is. We got a we got a vigilante, uh, effectively uh, a magical girl, effectively, and uh, the the blood sorceress, effectively. <laughs> <laughs> what market you? Exactly. Who, by the way, has the job of destroying the Shadowlands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. You know. But I think we all created very realistic, very fleshed out characters who ultimately at the end of the day would live lives filled with drama and angst. Yes. And so much drama. So much drama. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Should we wrap up this portion? Yeah. All right. All right. Well, David, thank you so much for joining us for our character creation episode. This was so much thank fun. Thank you for having me. Do you want to remind people where they can find you and what you are up to? Um, as always, you can always find me at Cardboard Republic under Dave of the Five Rings. You can also find me on Twitter at S-N-E-W-U-R-K-S, Soundworks. Um, I do a lot of my work both on those sp- spots. And as always, look for me as David Gordon Moresh. I crop up in the strangest of rule books. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, this was really great. Uh, Thank you for joining us. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And please join us on the next episode for our discussion block. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast, or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at LordNeptune, or online at LordNeptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us, and remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time.
now we got to read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you will find other great shows like One Shot. The most fun way to learn about new games is to play. On One Shot, you can discover the amazing variety in RPGs by listening to actual play. Every week, James D'Amato brings you a new episode with a talented cast of improvisers, game designers, and other notable nerds. At least once a month, One Shot features a new system exploring a wide variety of genres. The stories are self-contained, so you can jump in anywhere, and it's a great way to find your new favorite game. Discover the magic of RPGs with OneShot and your favorite podcast app.